And yes, you are reading that right. For those of you looking at the modern seat, you see Alex Majlatan on the right. He is playing Dredge this tournament. For I, shame. I can't believe it. Where are the robots? I think Affinity is a good deck right now, too. But I mean, I would trust Alex's opinion on this. Certainly. Now, I, I think I am looking forward to seeing what people select in Modern. Keep in mind, next weekend, we have the year's Modern Pro Tour in Bilbao. So we are starting, though, with Legacy. So Bob Huang on Grixis Delver. He's going to start turn one with a Gitaxian Probe, and we'll take a look at AJ Kerrigan's hand. It's got, looks to be three lands. That's a lot for a Storm Pilot. Yes. Two <laughs> Lotus Petals. Kind of like lands, but they add to your storm count. We got a Burning Wish and a Gitaxian Probe. This is a very slow hand. Yeah, it's a slow hand, and also, I mean, there's no targeted discard. I guess we're not going to get Thought Seized here, but I mean, the hand would be very weak to a Thought Seize on that Burning Wish. Yeah, you really just need to hit on the Probe, but a very nice top deck for uh, AJ here. He picked up a Cabal Therapy. Yeah, and that's going to be great. You see Bob making Underground Seat and just passing. Now, we're looking at some of the interactions he has here. Look, two Spell Pierces in the main to go with the four days for Force of Will. Mm -hmm. Days in Force of Will are not exceptional against particularly Storm for combo decks in Legacy, but they do do the trick if you get some pressure going. And look how fast Bob made that decision. AJ started with a Gitaxian Probe, and Bob immediately pulled the shot off that Spell Pierce at it. So the one matchup where that might punish you is if AJ is just playing Belcher and has a made hand otherwise, as he hadn't made his land drop yet. But uh, yeah. Bob probably has some insights. AJ has not been known to play a deck like Belcher. AJ draws a... Chrome Mox for the turn. I guess also there's a respect then to the top deck to Cabal Therapy from Bob. Yes. Saying, hey, if you get to look at my hand, that Cabal Therapy is a, pr is a pretty powerful oh, card. Right, yeah, Bob, Bob saw the hand, so yeah. Just, yeah well, this, he hadn't this, drawn the Therapy yet, so the yeah. Therapy, he, he's actually playing around AJ's top deck. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, so he, he knows what he's playing against, and the Burning Wish, it's not doing anything just yet. AJ doesn't have any rituals going on. And it looks like now we will see a card from Bob. Fetching main phase for a three mana spell. Perhaps true name Nemesis. And that looks to be the card, the three one here. It's There's the clock. It can be dicey to tap this low against Storm, uh, but because you know the hand, and AJ's hand needs a lot of help, this yeah. is a great window. Tap out now. Going forward, he'll be able to use probably at most one mana at sorcery speed to cast like a ponder find some counter magic, maybe a Cabal Therapy. So now Bob is pretty well set up. Ponder here from AJ Kerrigan. And especially if Bob's form of interaction is Force of Will, and I believe it is. I mean, what's tapping out until, you know, until you have five lands, there's really no difference between tapping out and not tapping out. Mm -hmm. AJ doesn't play days. You don't have to leave up mana for that. Right. And if you only have one piece of interaction, odds are AJ is going to be able to set up, get a discard spell, Get your force with that one way or the other, and just combo from there. So you really just need to get your threat online as fast as possible. A difficult ponder here for AJ. With, especially on these combo sides against a Delver deck, you want to make the most of this turn because you know that Bob's not going to tap out his mana ever again. Right. If you could get the force of will, that'd be really nice. I mean... AJ doesn't have access to Bob's hand at this point in time. His, his probe yeah. was countered, but... Um, well, he's got a Cabal Therapy, and even if he's going to blind call on Therapy, Force of Will's probably the card he'll name. With Bob <clears throat> tapped out, you might name Brainstorm. Ooh, that'd be good. If you hit, it'd be great. Mm -hmm. Therapy. names. He did name Force of Will, and he gets it. Yeah, so now um, he's picked up some more cards. You know, he's still sitting on two Lotus Petal and some find out if he has enough to do something meaningful on this turn. If he's picked up a Lion's Eye Diamond or something to, patch, uh, something to pitch to the Chrome Mox. Yeah, you don't want to pitch Lion's Eye Diamond, of course. Right, yeah, yeah that, that one doesn't play. But you're set up so you can actually Burning Wish or something you could do this turn, say, and empty the Warrens, so you could see him go for that on this turn. Got to look at those cards off the Cabal Therapy. One of them in Bob's hand is a Flooded Strand. I'm going to confirm what the other card was. You see AJ comboing here. Storm up to two, up to three with Lotus Petal, up to four with Lotus Petal. Ooh, and he does have the Lion's Eye Diamond. Chrome Mox, excellent, nothing. And yeah, this might be good. So we see four of the zero artifacts. Storm is up to six. Ooh, this is... Uh... 
So he can get up to seven, eight. So he's one shy of yeah. a Tendril's win here. So now spell seven is Burning Wish. With Burning Wish on the stack, he's going to crack Lion's Eye Diamond. So he needs to storm up to nine to win with Tendrils, it looks like. I think he's going for Empty of the Warrens here. Okay. And that'll yeah. probably be good enough. Yeah, we look at AJ's sideboard. He does have, well, he has, yeah, the, the targets are Burning Wish are Empty the Warrens, Past in Flames, Tendrils of Agony, Dark Petition, Cabal Therapy. Probably not Cabal Therapy. <laughs> he reaches for the Empty of the Warrens here. Right, so it looks like he'll get 16 goblins. We'll confirm. Yeah, that'll close us up in two turns. And and I'm going to check whether or not Bob has a way to answer them. No. And it was 16, and Bob does not have a sweeper in the main. So game one here goes over to the team on the left. It is a AJ Kerrigan with Storm picking up the game win. Yeah, forked Bolt, not quite good enough. Nothing like a main deck is at Staticaster. So things should change going into sideboards, but AJ quickly takes that in one game one. All right, well, those players are going to sideboard. We have a lot of matches, and we'll get back to this match after a word from our sponsors. All right, thank you. Welcome back. Players still getting into sideboarding. And Ryan talked about how things might change. The Delver player actually down a game here. Once we go to sideboard, uh, Delver's a great deck. What are the options he has to fight against AJ Kerrigan's Storm deck? So the full sideboard, we have three Cabal Therapy, two Surgical Extraction, two Diabolic Edict, two Pyroblast, two Ancient Grudge, a Dismember, a Price of Progress, and is it Static Caster and a Pithing Needle? Once you see yeah. Burning Wish and Chrome Mox, that actually just makes a lot of sense to bring in Static Caster. I'd say it certainly would have helped him that game. Yeah, uh, this is a deck that's going to go for Goblins more often than some other builds of Storm, so they'll cover Empty the Warrens. Pyroblast is actually pretty good against Storm. You want to hit their count, their cantrip spells early. Uh, frequently, they need a Brainstorm to resolve to actually make their hand. So Pyroblast is pretty good here. Cabal Therapy is the best card in this sideboard. Okay. And then there's some argument as to the efficacy of Surgical Extraction. Yeah, that was the one I was going to ask ask about. Uh, you're going to see players waffle pretty widely on if this card is good or not. My consensus is that it's not good enough for this matchup, and he has so many other good good uh, options to reach for. I think he has enough coming in that he doesn't have to go for Surgical. Frequently, I think you only board it in if you have a bad card in your main deck that you really need to get out. Another game results in here on the standard table. More good news for the team over here on the left. Abe Stein takes game one over Frank Scarin. Abe has sleeved up mono black aggro this weekend. That's the Frank Scarin special. He yeah, should, he I know. He should know how to beat that. Now Frank on the on Sultai Energy. This is all the, the team of Huang, Majelton, and Scarin. I I love all three players. Their deck choices. Well, not for Bob Huang, but right. for the other two. Surprised to see what they've registered. Yeah, definitely. So Bob on the play here for game number two starts off on Delver of Secrets. All right, Huang is on a mulligan to six here. But I'll say, Ryan, when I play with a combo deck, I, I know I, Delver of Secrets gets a bad rap a lot of the time. I know that you love playing Delver decks, but frequently don't like the card Delver. <laughs> um, as a combo player, I am terrified of this card. It Turn is, one oh on the my play. gosh. Turn one on the play, that's the place to be. It needs some help. Bob had it, but he's about to lose it. Yeah, Duress from Kerrigan. If there were just one Force of Will, Bob might lose it, but a hand of Brainstorm two forces and a second land, I would take the Brainstorm. Yeah, most certainly, especially because AJ is playing a bunch of Cabal therapies of his own. Is this a situation where Bob may have wanted to lead off on just land to represent the Brainstorm, or, do you, or is Turn 1 Delver just too good? You do need to get that pressure on the battlefield. If he had something like Spell Pierce, so that on turn two he can cast Delver and then otherwise use that mana. So if one of those forces is a Spell Pierce, maybe you just say land go? Right. Uh, it is interesting to just leave up the Brainstorm because then you set up the Delver if you have to use it. But if there's no discard spell, this Brainstorm is very bad and you just yeah. didn't cast your Delver. Yeah, I guess. Or maybe if, if a second land was a fetch land, maybe right. you leave up the Brainstorm. Yeah, with these two duels, it, you're not doing too much with it. Yeah. 
And it looks like AJ actually thinking about this one, whether or not he, he wants to take one of the forces. If you take one force, you've still left over a full force of will, and then there's just a brainstorm available if that's not what Bob wants to do. Yeah, he's going to take one. Now, here's my read on this, Ryan. I think AJ has another duress. That's like the only way this play makes sense. Sure, yeah. And I'm not even duress. sure it makes sense then. Right, you have duress, you don't have therapy. It, it starts to make a little bit more sense. When you just have the force of will and you're taking the, you know, you have two force of wills brainstorm, you take brainstorm, then there's just force force. If you duress again, you do put some pressure on Bob to find another blue card. Yeah. He's not guaranteed to do that. Yeah, here's my issue. So you see Bob draws something, he draws Deathrite Shaman, so Delver doesn't flip. He can make Deathrite Shaman, leave up Brainstorm. If Even if AJ has a second duress and he casts it, Bob will just Brainstorm in response. He might hide all his, like, the duress might whiff. Right. Uh, in By casting the Brainstorm, you, you at least don't get duress off of that. Right. He probably, depending on what he finds with the Brainstorm, you might just leave the Force of Will in hand because he can't convert it anyway. But if he yeah. finds like a Spell Pierce and leaves that on top, that's very bad for AJ. Right. I, I, I still wanted to take the Brainstorm here. I agree. So Deathrite Shaman joins Delver of Secrets. So that, that's enough pressure for Bob. Now he just needs to hold AJ off for a few turns. He just wants to run things like Spell Pierce, maybe Cabal Therapy off the top of his deck from here. All right, and here's, and here's that second duress. We suspected AJ has it, and now Bob will brainstorm in response. Maybe he draws Land, Gataxian Probe, Delver. So right now he can keep land, he can put back the Force of Will in the Probe and just show, yeah, I got a Delver and a Land. Nice duress. Then he's off of the Force of Will for some time. Yeah, there's some punishment for it. It's an interesting spot because yeah, well, none of these options are actually particularly good. He's kind of just hoping that AJ doesn't have a fast combo well, he, no matter what he does. Right, he's brainstorm locked. This right. is the issue, right? There's no fetch land here. And so he's going to make he's going to make the duress whiff. That's a win for Bob. Mhm. Mm and he also gets to put two instants on top so that when he casts flip, this next flip. Delver, yep, they're going to flip in sequence here. That's great. Yeah, it's just okay. You can see my cards. There's still some chance that Bob is dead on this turn. Yeah, I mean, Storm's a great deck. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that he could have done about that, of course. No. And with AJ casting spells, that's not a good sign. All right, Chrome Mox, Pitching Infernal Tutor, Lotus Petal, LED. Infernal Tutor. Okay, well, this is Storm all the way up to, I believe, five, getting empty the Warrens. We got Bob's Brainstorm, too. Six, okay. AJ's going fast. Hold on. <laughs> is that seven? All right, so we have the four cards, the five cards in the graveyard. Yeah, it looks like it's eight. That's Bob a lot. Bob will flip into the Insectile Aberration. Now... Can Bob survive this? Maybe. He's got, I don't know, Death probably still not enough. Deathrite Shaman well, can block. He, uh, so he's, he's drawing Force of Will, and the next card is Gataxian Probe. I don't really want to cast. The mm. live draw in his deck is it a Static Caster. Yeah, he can't just race it. Yeah, he, yeah, there's no way he's winning the game on that front. Well, I was thinking if there's a bunch of creatures in the graveyards, maybe Bob can yeah, block and gain life. There's but there zero. Aren't. There's zero, yeah. so... Also, Bob doesn't have any green mana. Just letting you know, couple we, problems. We are aware of the resolution issues right now. We are working on that as soon as we can. Thank you for being patient with us. We want to get you a crisp look at those Cedric Phillips goblin tokens. How do you feel about two stacks of eight goblins versus one stack of 16? How would you feel if I put one goblin and then I put a one and a six next to each other on inside it's 16 goblins? I'd like, that's efficient. <laughs> Big fan. And then I looked and I was like, I don't know how to make 17. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you just put another one on top of the six. Another one on top of the six. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. See, right now you don't know whether he has eight and eight or whether he has, you know, 124 goblins. Maybe these, these are stacks of 62 goblins. Or they could be two goblins with eight 1-1 one, one counters on them. Any of these things. You just don't know. Equally as I probable. I think the only way we can do it is we need to get 18 physical tokens and just cover the battlefield with them. That's a good way to do it. That's, it's the only way. <laughs> That's the number of tokens we're actually representing all of them is actually harder to track. <laughs> I think my favorite moment uh, a couple years ago on the SCG tour 
was having in a Johnny Ultimate where you get cats equal to your life total, players having guys digs out of his backpack, gets 22 cat tokens, puts them all in the, the guy waits and he lets him put them all in the battlefield, and then he just untaps and rats them. <laughs> I was going to go somewhere else. Uh, during Eldrazi Winter, we had Devin Kepke playing a blue-white Eldrazi mirror, and they were representing the number of scions they oh, controlled yeah. with a piece of paper that said, like, 340 scions. I, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, we were there for that. that was... What a good game. <laughs> Bob's down to five on the attack. You see AJ brainstorming back up here. There's only a small number of things that AJ could possibly have to fade. Uh, it's at Staticaster's the most common, and that's the one that Bob has. There's some small chance there's like a toxic deluge in the 75. But AJ doesn't have much counterplay against these sorts of things. He already knows Bob's hand, and that's going to be the concession there. Bob not able to draw onto the Static Caster on that turn. All right, so match one is complete. AJ Kerrigan with Storm. He's your winner. Two games to zero over Bob Juan. So that's one match. If their team gets another match, they will be the winners of the round. So we're going to go ahead as our spotter looks at the other tables, and we'll get you, get you into another match just after a word from our sponsors. All right, and we are back here. We're going to go over to the match between Frank Scarin and Abe Stein here. It's Mono Black Aggro versus Sultai Energy. Looks like we might be headed toward a third game. Update from the modern match. Alex Magiton on, I know, hard to say it, on Dredge <laughs> is up a game. So we are still playing. Over here, the Mono Black Aggro deck not piloted by Scarin. It's piloted by Abe Stein. He won game one, but he is... He's facing a pretty difficult spot here, game two. He's got uh, he's got Scarin down to ten, but that's about the best we can do. Yeah, Scarin in a pretty nice position here. We see he has Veraska, a ravenous Chupacabra, facing down a night market lookout that cannot crew a heart of Karan. Yeah. So this mono black deck, I'm, I I I feel like we're going toward a third game here. Yeah, I think you can make the argument that none of the individual cards in Mono Black are remotely comparable to the Scarab God that Frank Scarin is currently resolving. Yeah, so once you got to a point where you have Ravenous Chupacabra and Scarab God from Scarin, he, he's turned the corner. You also see cards like Death Gorge Scavenger in Frank's graveyard. That one's out of the sideboard uh, as part of his anti-aggro package. 
a little life gain. Goes into combat pretty well against almost everything that Stein is presenting. The mono black aggro deck really needs to get ahead and stay ahead. Once you find yourself in a position where you're considerably behind, there's not a lot that this deck can do. 10 life is a lot, a lot of life. You know, the Night Market Lookout, cards of that nature, they can get in some chip shots, but okay. 10 is a really big ask, especially with the closing speed of the Scarab God. There's going to be a few things that Scarab's going to be able to bring back from the graveyards as 4-4s. Four That's going to take some chip shots in the upkeep. Okay. In the game, you see Stein's had enough of it. <laughs> He's not interested in trying to play through that. All right, so that match is going to even up at one game apiece. And I do want to go ahead and look at their sideboards here when we, if we have a second. But we did see... All right, we may not actually be able to get... We, we, we have them here. We can go ahead and, and read about them. So... For Frank Scarin's side, he's got Moment of Craving, Vraska, Death Gorge Scavenger, Life Crafters, Bestiary, Essence Scatter, Negate, and Duress all available. Moment of Craving is a slam dunk against decks like this. It destroys basically all these creatures. You see how the Vraska, Vraska was in there. Is he's going for more of an attrition plan. Having that at the top of curve makes some sense. And the Death Gorge Scavenger allows him to kind of tie everything together. Great drop in the middle of the game. There's already a creature that's been destroyed, say, by a Fatal Push. You gain two life on the spot when you get to attack. And when it enters the battlefield as well. Now, on Abe Stein, Mono Black Aggro, it's, it's going to be a good deck out of the gates. It's got a good proactive plan, but when your, your mana base is 16 swamps, four if near Deadlands, oftentimes the knock against these kind of decks is you don't have great sideboard options. Nope. We have some Duresses, four Duresses, four Kite Sail Freebooter, three Moment of Craving, a Vraska's Contempt, an Ether Sphere Harvester, and two Gifted Aetherborn. Okay. Aetherborn's fine, just because it has Death Touch. It can attack through some of the larger creatures that Skaren's presenting. It's not very exciting. You can duress a deck like this. It doesn't get you very far. Some of the best cards in Skaren's deck are just as creatures anyway. Right, so do you do you want to board in something like Vraska's Contempt to hit his mid-range threats? It's kind of playing Frank's game. Right, there's, there's a lot of that going on there. You can Contempt a Scarab God, but how far does that really get you? When you're on the play, you can leverage that a little bit more. That can be a plus positive tempo kind of move for you. Right. Probably wasn't in on the draw. There's been a little deliberation with the team here. Maybe that's something that Stein's looking at on the play instead. You do want to have answers to Death Gorge Scavenger. Certainly can't just let Scarab God exist on the table. Yeah. You have to close the game within a, a couple of turns once that one hits. So I want to look at Frank's deck. We saw Sultai Energy third place last weekend, piloted by Dan Jessup. And Frank's actually changed out a fair number of things here. We, uh, we There were Bristling Hydras originally in, I guess, I'm going to pause. Those are actually still in Frank's deck. So so this is, I was going to say it's a lot different. Um <laughs> See, he Not hit. as much. Yeah, he just put them in a... He hit them from us here. You know, botanical Sangnum, Blooming Marsh, Bristling Hydra. You know, it yeah. just makes sense. He's got fetid pools up in his spells column, too. Be curious to find out what the exact sorting method is here. Because it's close to yeah. alphabetical. Well, <laughs> it, it, it looks like what he's done to change the list is in the sideboard. He's added these Moment of Cravings. This is the two man, one in a black. Tar creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn, gain two life. If and you uh, look at the results of the Classic last weekend, this card is good against almost all the successful decks. I definitely want to play against Mono Red, and you know, I wasn't planning to beat Mono Black, but now that I'm playing against it, I'm pretty happy to have him in my sideboard. Mm -hmm. Also, you want to talk about Jim Davis's blue-white auras deck that he's written about for StarCityGames.com. One of the best cards in that deck is a Danto Vanguard. And Indestructible. A clean yeah. answer to that is really nice. So we, despite we started with our our legacy match here, AJ Kerrigan, a two-zero winner. But it's looking like the team of Huang, Magelton, and Scarin may rally. They've gotten the last two games, wins by Magelton and Scarin. Now, you're going to want to stick around. This All day today, we are going to be announcing the biggest thing on the SCG Tour this year. It's SCG Con. It's taking place of the, at, of the Invitational. It is the Star City Convention. We will be telling you all about it after each round today. And yes, there are 
that many different things happening at the convention. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a great weekend. A lot of juicy details coming down the pipeline. Yeah, this is one of the more exciting things. I personally am really happy to, to be able to announce this, um, some of, to share all the things that are going to be happening. Yeah, it's going to be a sweet weekend. Yeah. So, Abe Stein, back on the play, game three. Mono Black Aggro, we don't see too much of this deck. And it's not, it's been around, but never really more than 1% of the meta. Do you think there's a reason why it would be resurging right now? I think it's just because um, the deck. It's harder to prepare for. A lot of the things that you do that beat the mono red aggressive deck, this deck has some outs to. Access to Scrap Heap Scrounger is really good against decks that are just trying to one for one removal spell you. Dread Wanderer for the same reason. All right, Abe's going to start on Night Market Lookout here. The 1 1, when it attacks, he'll get an extra point of damage. Drains for 1 1. It becomes tapped, actually. So you can, even with crewing, you can get some extra value there. Powerful synergies. Now it actually is going to get hit by a Fatal Push. No attacks even. So Frank's staying at a clean 20. Abe restocks with Gifted Aetherborn. But I think herein lies some of the problem, right? If Frank can have removal spells up at the curve, which Black's pretty capable of doing, I don't know whether or not Abe can beat it. No, it's, it's really tough, especially with the threats that he's presenting. If it was turn one Dread Wanderer, turn two Scrap Heap Scrounger, that's a very different game. Yeah, then we're okay, but, you know, Night Market Lookout, Gifted Aetherborn, these are not powerful magic cards. They really are hoping to catch your opponent curved. Mm -hmm. And we see we see the Branch Bender here. Walker. Branch Walker, Merfolk Branch Walker, 2-1 here, draws a Botanical Sanctum for Frank. He actually wanted to miss on the land so that so he, he could, could get trade. in front of the yeah. Aetherborn. And now we see a three drop. At first, I was thinking it might be Ruin Raider, but no, it looks like we have Amit Eternal here. This is another spot where I think he's yeah. kind of missing on his curve. You would have really liked Ruin Raider, get that free extra card. He is not playing Ruin Raider. He has hmm. gone with four Amit Eternals. Then I guess he wouldn't have liked Ruin yeah, Raider. Yeah, no, I mean, I, <laughs> I normally see that Ruin Raider as the three drop of choice in these black decks. Now, Amit Eternal, we saw back in Cincinnati a while ago, right when. Right when Amonkit came out, we had uh, Black Red Aggro by Jackson Hicks go pretty deep in the tournament with a four copies. I haven't seen anyone play it much on the tour since then. No, there's a lot of downside on this card. When you're on the play and you can effectively lever leverage it, it can be very impressive. There's a number of matchups where it's not particularly good. Yeah, so in the deck we saw with Jackson, it, it interacted with some unblockability. He had a, he, his deck was half creatures, half removal, and he believed he had key to the city yes. to help this card out. Now, this is a different look on it because Abe Stein's deck is not 20-20-20. It is creature, creature, creature. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is just kind of like the largest creature, just converted mana cost to power and toughness, assuming your opponent's not casting that many spells. Jade Light Ranger from Frank knocks the Amit down to a 4-4. And because this explored into spells and is a four-power creature, now Scarin does get to make a good block that can just go right in front of the Amit Eternal because he cast a spell. Right. We look at the removal that Abe could have. He's got four Fatal Push, three Walk the Plank, and two Supernatural Stamina. Those were all in the main. I don't know how many of them he kept around. Walk the Plank's not great on this battlefield. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You if you recall, <laughs> Merfolk Swim. Swim. Yeah. I always liked limited casting Walk the Plank on a dinosaur. Just like the mental image of it was pretty good. <laughs> Your boat's tipping over, but that dinosaur's walking out on the plank. All right, Ammon Eternal blocked by Jade Light Ranger. This is a trade Frank's all too happy to make. I want to see whether or not Abe has the stamina. He does not. They trade. He's got to get through that ranger at some point anyway. Yeah, and I guess he has to convert the Amit Eternal right away because it's just going to get smaller if he lets Frank untap. Right. And he gets through with that Afflict. Yeah, so it takes three on the Afflict. Got two more damage off the Gifted Aetherborn, and he'll make Heart of Kiran. Once again, we see him with the heart and a creature that cannot crew it, so he's going to need a follow-up to convert that. Very powerful card, and Scrap Heap Scrounger, one of the better cards in Abe's deck. He just hasn't been able to present one just yet. 
we're getting to the point where Scare, uh, Scarin could potentially start casting Scarab Gods. All right, a swing and a fatal push. And we see Death Gorge Scavenger from Scarin. I was a little surprised to see Fatal Push used there by Abe. Not that the 2 1 just didn't seem to matter. Yeah, that was a very aggressive use. It looks like his hand's just full of removal spells. Yeah, he's not, now we found something that can walk the plank, and it's a dinosaur. Excellent. Swing by Gifted Aetherborn. Frank might trade. He's thinking about it for sure. From 15, given that the scavenger does gain life. I'd be very curious. He wants to keep it, yeah. Yeah, Frank traded here. Must mean his hand's very light on removal spells. You, you know, I still like the trade. And that, uh, okay, he's gonna. Okay, he's blocking and fatal pushing. All right. So it's not really a trade. This makes more sense. Even a trade might be okay. Remember, trading cards like this, which is what's happening. You see the Death Guard Scavenger eating a fatal push. This all benefits Frank. If Abe had things like Dread, Dread Wanderer, Scrap Heap Scrounger, I think this trade game would be fine. But now we're going to see the Scarab God from Scarin and 15 life, empty board. I'm pretty into it. Mm -hmm. And Abe really needs to be able to crew this heart. Walk the plank on the Scarab God. Night Market Lookout. As you mentioned from last game, Night Market Lookout cannot drive Heart of Kiran. It's going to need a friend. If Abe somehow had two more Night Market Lookouts, yeah. I'd be interested in what's happening. And Scarab God just comes back into play. When it hits the graveyard, it goes back to Frank's hand. Ooh, and halfway another, there. Oh, Two-thirds two of the way there. <laughs> another Night Market Lookout. If they, a team of three Lookouts can drive the Heart of Quran. That is a high power engine that Abe is building here. Four uh, I just want to see like three people all trying to drive it. You know, I guess one has to like work the boiler room, one's at the wheel. It's a complicated vehicle, right? And it's not like driving a car. I don't know. A dinosaur can do it by itself. That's true. It uh, can't be that hard. Perhaps the dinosaurs of Ixalan are very intelligent <laughs> reptiles. And, but now Frank has untapped with Scarab God, and that does not usually end well for your opponent. So Jade Light Ranger comes, enters the battlefield again, draws two cards off exploring. This is reasonable. Four mana for a 4-4 that draws two cards. I would say is above the curve. Yeah, I'm pretty in to play that. Also lets you scry one and your opponent loses a life every turn. Scarab God also just has good attacks if Scarab is so inclined this turn. I want him to use it on Abe's Amit Eternal so that we can put this Eternal counter on Amit Eternal. That would be cute. Just reiterates. Yeah, I kind of I kind of like you know the, the drawing cards <laughs> and maybe going for the Death Card Scavenger, but look, it's Eternal, okay? It's already a zombie, so you know that's a little redundant. It's probably why he's avoiding it. Attacks a Scarab God. Also, when you eternalize the Amid Eternal, you're making it smaller. Yeah, that's less good. Yeah. Dread Wander into play tapped. Mm. So next turn, Abe can drive the Heart of Kiran, but he's, he's already losing the race. Yeah, that, that is not synergistic with vehicles entering the battlefield tapped. And once again, we see Frank's deck just kind of executing yep. while Stein's deck is coming up short. Well, we saw each player keep... We see, look, look at the graveyards. Two fatal pushes, is it on both sides? So we, both players are content to fatal push each other's early drops. And if that's what's going to happen, well, then I want to be the player who casts Scarab God on five and not the player who casts Night Market Lookout on five. Right. And, and for Stein, the reasons to play this deck, the early sticky creatures, he didn't present those in the early game. And you do a Heart of Quran that he's never been able to crew. Yeah. This, you're seeing kind of the worst case scenario for the way that this deck performs. Well, yeah, you're playing cards like Night Market Lookout. I mean, eventually, you're going to run into the problem that your commons are not as good as your opponent's mythic rares. Funny how that works. Yeah, I mean, they may be more efficient, but <laughs> but head, you know, I, heads up, I, they don't. And that might not they even cost be less mana. I don't yeah. know if they're more efficient. And here's Chupacabra. That's going to shoot down Dread Wanderer. Abe does not have a fourth land. Can't get back Dread Wanderer just yet. It's only three to bring that one back, but it does come tapped. Yeah, well, he already had one mana tapped to cast it. It's a, it's a sorcery speed activation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He only does sorcery speed. Yeah, so either way, he's denying the Heart of Kiran activation again. Right. 
Love the swamp spread by Stein here. I'm into it. And here's Vraska's contempt for Scarab God. That is the clean answer, but it, it may be too late already. Abe is down to eight right now. And Scarab's just playing for Scarab God, so we'll see if he has another. Moment of craving, shoots down another lookout. Yeah, just with what's already going on in the battlefield, Scarin's still just very far ahead. See both players taking up two life points. Both Vraska's Contempt and Moment of Craving have life gain attached to themselves as removal. And we see the Branch Walker, Merfolk <laughs> Branch Walker. Another Vraska's Contempt on top, sure, Frank will that should cover any card that Abe can draw. That's one of the cards I put in my deck. It is a spell. I will elect to draw it. And it's good against every spell in Abe's deck. If you're able, ever able to crew that heart, clear an, clean answer already on lock. Servant of the Conduit, and there's the hand extension. So, the standard match after losing game one goes to Frank Scarin with Sultai Energy. And that will even the match score up at one apiece, which means we go to our modern match, Jonathan Sukenik, Jeskai Control versus Alex Majlatan on Dredge. Gotta be a little bittersweet for Scarin to dispatch his darling like that. One of the early players in the mono black aggressive strategy. But winning is nice. Speaking of someone else who's not dispatching, that would be Alex Majlatan. He's on Dredge. <laughs> And looking at the board here, looks like he is dispatching. Got, well, there's a we got a there's a ruined halo in play for Sukanic. One thing about ruined halo is that it only can name one card name. Yeah, it looks like he has been unable to control the graveyard. You know, when we look at Sukanic's sideboard, he does not have any copies of Rest in Peace. Yikes. If you get enough Ruined Halos, you can answer this, but we see multiple card names here. We have Prized Amalgam, Bloodgast, Stinkweed Imp, Narc Amoeba, even a little Golgari Thug hanging out in there. Yeah, you're well, looking at ways he can permanently answer. So Dredge's threats keep continue to come, recur. Um, he's got an Anger of the Gods and a Detention Sphere, which could be very strong here. Otherwise, the problem is these cards will just keep coming back. Yeah, really wants Anger here. This could still be the kind of game that a conflagrate could deal a lot of damage in. Yeah. So the Ruined Halo is naming Bloodgast. And it looks like we might be seeing a conflagrate right now. Dealing a little bit more damage than Bloodgast does. Yeah. A little desperations for Sukenic. He's reaching for Lightning Helix to survive. And that was the Anger turn. So you're going to pick up Scalding Tar, and he has at least a Serum Vision, so we can try to dig for it. Yeah, you see some of these control cards. Logic Knot. Um, the problem is if he has an, if, if, whether or not he has another redraw. So Serum Vision sees him three cards on the following turn, mm -hmm. but if he needs it right now, then Serum Vision is just a blind cantrip. Right. And Jonathan might be up with something. You see him cracking Scalding Tarn prematurely. I, either that or he's really a blind drawing and he's getting one fewer card in his deck. Here's Serum Vision's draws. Not a red card. Not a red card. Not a red card. Okay, both to the bottom. He has, he has the option to find something like Detention Sphere on this turn and have Anger next turn, yeah. theoretically. I believe he has Think Twice in hand. He's got two in the list, but he's actually passing, so we'll see what he's up to. He's got a plan. Does he have, like, a Terminus in his deck? Is he trying to Ooh. Think Twice into Terminus? No. No, okay. That would have been exciting. That would have been, like, Avacyn Restored Limited Block <laughs> Constructed. <laughs> Cryptic Command, okay. And he's trying to, looks like, 
bounce the Snapcaster Mage. Alex attempted to Dark Blast the Snapcaster Mage. He didn't want this recurring, but Jonathan is going to go ahead and Logic Knot away the Dark Blast. Mm. Usually you wouldn't protect your Snapcaster Mage from a Dark Blast, but he needs that in play for this Cryptic Command to resolve. Yeah, and it looks like he might be trying to go for, you see a Sphinx's Revelation in his graveyard. He may want to Snapcast that. Right now it would be Revelation for four if he can pull it off. Mm -hmm. If he can draw more Cryptic Commands, the Snapcaster yeah. Mage turns it into two. Yeah, so we're in this territory where Jeff Guy Control needs to be crypticking every turn. Yes, until it finds Anger of the Gods. Right. The players have to start getting a little bit concerned about time. Probably a lot concerned, actually. A little over eight minutes left. A Johnny Vengeance, Celestial Purge. And that Snapcaster Major, the cards in Sukenik's hand. It's got, looks like, one more. These are the sort of things that do pretty good work if Magilton has very little going on. Yeah. They're very low value at this point in the yeah, game. Yeah, Think Twice is the fourth card. So here's Snapcaster Major. It's going to target Serum Visions. Serum Visions, draw. Secure the Wastes was the draw. Two scries to the bottom. That's like a time walk. Yeah, that's that could do something. Uh, there's a lot of flyers for Magilaton, though. Yeah, well, let's see. We have the four damage of flyers on the top, plus a fifth one in that stack, so five damage from flyers. Depending on whether or not he's got Conflagrate going, we'll see. Here is a Think Twice from Sukenic, main phase. He's still trying to hit that Anger, but he missed. We'll play a land. And he may need to not... Tr yeah, he can't flash it back anyway. He wouldn't have the mana to cast Anger if he hits it. Mm -hmm. And if Magilaton has or can find another Conflagrate, he'll be able to do a lot of damage with that very quickly. Yeah, that should be lethal. You see Alex actually hanging on to cards in his hand. Yeah, so Life from the Loam fills loam. up the hand real quick. Ooh, and there is a Conflagrate flipped off that Loam, so that should bring him up to six cards in hand. Five damage from Flyer, six cards in hand, he's, he's short. He can go for it in force action, or he can wait until next turn with Life from the Loam, he'll be able to get him three more points. Right. Hmm, I think Magilton is thinking about a potential Settle the Wreckage here. It makes a lot of sense to attack with all the creatures unless Sukhanic has exactly settle, but he does line you mean up. Secure the wastes. Uh, no, no, he does not. He doesn't need to play around secure the waste. I'm saying if Sukhanic maybe had a settle the wreckage. Oh, okay. Have we seen that in modern? Some small number. Okay. I don't know if it's stock, but uh, Sukhanic is not generally known for playing exact stock. Yeah, and he doesn't have it. So game and match will go over to. Alex Magiton. So it's the team of Huang, Magiton, and Scarin. They are your winners round one. Despite actually the 2-0 loss over in Legacy, Bob's teammates are able to carry him for this one. Yeah, kind of funny how that lined up, but uh, the matchups for both the standard and the modern player there did look very good for their team. Yeah, so some great magic already here. Now, I'm just going to say with Alex Magiton, a great magic player, specifically in modern, but what are your thoughts putting down Affinity, a deck that I'm hearing a lot of pro players right now say top of the meta going into the Pro Tour, and he's playing Dredge, and that's a deck that, uh, you know, I think is actually on the downswing. I think that that is kind of the primary incentive to actually make that switch, right? The less okay. prepared people are for Dredge, for example, Jonathan Sukenik no not rest having peace. rest in yeah. peace, the better Dredge is able to perform. So it's kind of a metagame call there. You, even if you have this one deck that you always play, Throwing a curveball can be very beneficial. Yeah, and I guess that's got to feel rewarding for Alex Magiton. Jeskai Control is typically a matchup where Affinity... <laughs> it's like Affinity's worst, worst matchup. Ba yeah, so he's like, he's like, you know, got to walk away being like, 2-0 Jeskai, feeling good about my deck choice. Yeah, like, like they just have good cards against you in a reasonable Game 1 matchup, and then they frequently have Stony Silence for Game or 2. Or like Wear Tears yeah. that they snap cast. It's really gross. Right. All right, so we are going to start our announcements here. This is SCG Con. So this is happening at the end of Season 1 in Rome. Roanoke, Virginia. So this is happening on Invitational Weekend. Now, in the past, we've had the Invitational. So the three-day tournament. We know you guys like to come out for that. But what we were finding over in the SG Tour is that the other things going on that weekend, we want to have 
a ton of reasons to come to the Invitational Weekend, and we're going to throw a whole convention. So we're going to debut the, talk about the different parts of the convention all day here. So at, the first thing we want to announce is that we will be having a cosplay contest during SCG Con with actual cash prizes. We know that the MTG cosplay right now, really one of the one of the things that has picked up in the game in the last two years. We want to be able to support cosplayers uh, both with a, a, a place where they can display their cosplays and we figured to actually have a have actual cash incentives. Yeah, it's been picking up a lot. Uh, you see some really cool costumes come out of this, and that's kind of the hallmark for a lot of people of things like Comic-Con, so making it feel a lot more like that. Yeah, and we, especially now now that with Rivals of Ixalan out, you know, we, we have more dinosaurs you could cosplay as. Uh, my favorite cosplay I've ever seen, somebody showed up to Comic-Con dressed as the convention center. They oh, just cool. built it and turned it into a costume. Uh, some cool ideas for magic cosplay. The well is very deep there. Yeah, especially was I have anything out of Rivals. I think we could get you get an Angrath one going. I don't think I've seen any of that yet. Angrath's really cool. There's a lot of vampires that uh, yeah. they just wear cool costumes. Like their fancy dress is really interesting. I'd like to see like an Elvish visionary cosplay. Maybe like Smuggler's Copter. Maybe not that one. But. All right. <laughs> There's a smuggler's copter. I like to see like it. Like the, the the mechanical cosplays. If it actually like moved, like that, like functioning parts. I like some of the interesting ones. I could get behind a tricorn hat. You know, it's not that different. <laughs> sure. All right. So that's gonna be it for round number one. But with these team events, you know, they we base we have a lot of magic and very short breaks. So we're gonna we're gonna take a break as we, they pair up the round for round number two. But join us when we come back. It's going to be round number two of the Philadelphia Open. Bringing friendly competition and exclusive prizes to stores worldwide, Game Night features a Croak and Crusader tokens and pins all throughout December.